Welcome everyone, Dr. Thor here, and get ready for Gnosis. Well, this is a movie review of uh, the hunt for Vlad the Impaler, often known as Dracula, because he was the head of the, or a member of, his father was the member of the Dragon Society of Christian Knights, protecting his country. You know, there's a lot of misinformation on Vlad and has been made into this comic book vampire uh, based on uh, Bran Stoker's pretty uh, disinformation book. Uh, he didn't really understand the issue that was going on there and um, I'm not sure where he was coming from uh, to understand what he was writing there. So I don't know if he's condemning him or not, but the true story of uh, Vlad Tepish, the great, great uh, Romanian warrior and leader, uh, is a story that I've detailed uh, in quite uh, a long in another video that you should check out on the site. Because uh, it is important to know the kind of disinformation lies that you've been told by the media, probably by your buffoonish teachers, uh, written in poorly researched books. It just doesn't add up. Nobody seems to understand um, what is going on in anything in the world. And I think this is a prime example. It's also a prime example, uh, this movie of the mind of the Turks, even in modern times now, and their collective connection to Islam. They are usurpers. They're occupying a country that they stole from the Christians. Uh, Turkey uh, is not a in any way uh, an indigenous land to the Turks. They came there, murdered all the people there, all the Christians there, and have tried to take Constantinople, which is the real name for what is considered Turkey today, which was the Rome of its time. They took the major Christian center. That's like us going to the major Islamic centers right now and occupying them or still occupying them. I frankly doubt that that would be the case today. Certainly the gutless Christians who should have taken back Turkey and uh, pushed the usurping Islamic empire who's known for its murderous brutality um, for hundreds of, for their entire inception, by the way. They stole that country. Does anybody understand the history of so-called Turkey or Teke, which is the um, Muslim family uh, that actually uh, took that and attacked Constantinople? Um, nobody really understands these things. And um, it's, it, it is equivalent to occupying Mecca. So anyone who understands so Mecca, which is the major religious center for Islam, it would be like us occupying that uh, for thousands. Of, and it's okay. It's sort of okay. It's only uh, when Christians went there to protect uh, the Middle East or their uh, Jerusalem, their founding city, the ones that they, um, I don't know if you call owned, uh, but it, nobody owned that. They it was founded by and built by the Christians and somewhat the Jews. So Islam, which is 500 years, let me repeat that, 500 years later than Christianity. So we need to understand that, that Christianity is approximately 2,000 years old, Islam is 1,500, Judaism is about 4,000 if we uh, and approximately. So there wasn't any of this. There wasn't the uh, Islam at the time that the Christians uh, were uh, starting the Christianity. And of course, they occupied um, or ha they founded Jerusalem and kept that city going along with many others. So this is again a fallacy, but when you go in uh, and the uh, Sudak Turks uh, who came in there and murdered all the um, actual uh, people that were living in Jerusalem and took the city, well, that was okay because it was kind of there. It wasn't kind of theirs. You remember, the Middle East is made up of nothing but tribes. There were no countries. There hasn't been countries in the Middle East until a little after World War II where the British decided to just, uh, to a certain amount, summarily declare countries. Um, so this is never uh, fully understand by uh, people. But And the whole story of Vlad Dracula, the amazing and wonderful warrior of the Christian Empire, protecting his country uh, from these uh, uh, murderous invaders who in the early 1900s murdered 1,500,000, a million and a half 
Christian Armenians. Now, this is in ancient times. This is early 1900s. Not to mention all the other atrocities they have done in all the places that they've been involved with and continue to do, killing their own people, the Kurds. So, as we um, look at the whole history here of this horrible empire, um, you'd think that, and of course they're a fascist-led country right now, a fascist Islamic country, um, which is bolstered by and supported, and they, to a large extent, run uh, parts of Europe, particularly with their German allies, who are basically Arabs themselves. They come from Iran. That's where Germans come from. They are Arabs. And, of course, they've worked together, and the Germans helped with the massacre of the Armenians, and it goes on and on and on. So, But people don't know real history. Actually, the art or science or fun of <laughs> impaling and crucifixion uh, came from the Iranians, otherwise known as the Persians. They invented that. So... So here's a tiny little country being invaded by butchering uh, foreign r religious people um, who demanded thousands of children every year to turn into psychosexual killers. They would take the boys and turn them into psychotic killers. These are called the Januaries. Uh, part of their indoctrination to make them psychotic was to, uh, and these are all boys, was that they would rape them endlessly. So this is exactly what happens to Ben there. It's an old trick, and of course, uh, the connection to this kind of practices, particularly from Islam, uh, because of their strange relationship to females, um, is notorious. If you don't know about it, find out about it. So Vlad and his brother, Rau, Rau um were forced to be given to the Turks, who they took them in this program, and who uh, they... Uh, raped and tortured for many years while teaching them as well. Uh, so while he was taught to, to be a warrior and whatever happened to Vlad uh, definitely was uh, happened there, uh, being the great warrior that he was, he took his time until he could escape from there, learning military tactics to go back and save his country, Romania. So and as I've mentioned, I'm going to repeat again, Dracula has nothing to do with Dracula or some sort of bad B horror movie about blood drinkers. Um, this, and as I said, I'm not really sure what Bram Stoker, the writer of Dracula, uh, meant there. He was just, I'm not sure if he was serious or not, but he read, of course, a lot of bad literature on that incident, which was written by the enemies of Romania, the Germans. So, what's new? So their fake Christianity is amusing as it continues to go through this world today. So the whole idea is that um, uh, certainly he wasn't supported, and he wasn't supported by anybody. And as usual, the uh, confrontations um, uh, that were threatening Christendom, none of the Christians got together. The Hungarians, of course, uh, were fighting Dracula and even imprisoned him. Um, instead of working with him to push back uh, the hordes of Islamic murderers coming. Um, but as I've mentioned, so he uh, was raped and tortured all of his life, turned into a psycho murderer to some degree. But he really didn't murder anybody uh, or impale any innocent people. These are all either traitors or enemies. Um, and when you're outnumbered, you want to do something that has as much uh, shock and awe, remember those terms, uh, that you possibly can. So um, all of this was... Um, uh, to defend his country and to defend Christendom. Uh, now, few people understand that the Turks and Islam have been attacking Europe uh, for hundreds and hundreds of years. They tried to invade Vienna twice with massive armies and uh, failed. So the whole idea is that all of this is um, history that seems to be swept under the carpet. Uh, the Turks continue to cause trouble on Cyprus, fight the Greeks who they murdered in batches before. As I said, they're living in a seized country, which they have no right to. Uh, but when you're also being protected by your cousins, the Germans, who, by the way, never attacked any of their um, cousins, and Hitler himself talked about how he liked Muslims so much. 
So uh, this connection, which seems to be not made by many people in modern times, is quite shocking, but uh, that's all part of the game, isn't it? <laughs> the disinformation. All you have to do is research it. But this film here uh, goes into the complete disinformation. It shows the Turkish attitude uh, of how they hate Christianity and how they hate Vlad, that he was a maniac thinking it was Jesus uh, because he defended his country, uh, is shocking in its nature. This is a propaganda film, which is filmed relatively well, as uh, movie industry techniques uh, have gotten around the world. And, of course, they're working with people who are non-Muslim to make a lot of these films to do them right. Or I should say non-Turkish. So these kind of uh, propaganda films that go back uh, literally hundreds and hundreds of years when the incident with him happened to show that they're still doing this and have this propaganda how he was so terrible because he wanted to defend his country and so terrible because he was a Christian is pretty shocking and people need to understand that this is the mind you're dealing with uh, coupled with the German and the Russians uh, who run all of Europe uh, while the Americans assist them by having bases in a hostile enemy's place while they smile at them and take billions of your dollars to keep uh, basically a um, this fascist Nazi regime, uh, otherwise known as the Russian-German uh, Islamic Federation, going. It's really pathetic. Um, it, but ever since the massive amounts of Russians when the wall came down, because there wasn't any East Germany, it's basically Western Russia, where all those Russians came in, including the uh, Angela Merkel, otherwise known as the Russian Chancellor of Germany, um, brought all this uh, into understanding if you do any kind of research here. So all you got to do is read history. None of what I'm saying has anything else to do with history. It's not anything I'm making up. It's facts. And if you're going to live in a disinformation world and you're going to believe idiots, it's important. But this kind of stuff goes out there. I'm sure that this action picture, which, um, as I said, is done fairly well, uh, the basic Turkish youth and the Turks in general, you know, this is a big glorification um, uh, of their uh, atrocities, which are as long as your arm as well, not just the Greeks and the uh, Armenians. There's one uh, Turkish massacre after another. And we also have to understand that the Ottoman Empire was aligned with the Germans in World War I and World War II, uh, which is interesting. So, um, and it's quite fascinating that the Nazis never attacked a, quote, white country. And of course, the Germans aren't white, they're Aryan. Aryan is basically an Arab. So uh, it's important to understand it, but nobody knows that and nobody even thinks about it. And uh, mindless uh, boobs um, who scream white power and have Nazis things are screaming basically um, Arab power. So certainly um, this is the kind of confusion that causes problems that um, the reason why the world is all messed up. But if you want to see real propaganda films, I don't recommend anybody buy this, look at it, etc. There's nothing to learn. There's nothing interesting there. Um, there are much better action movies. Um, and to actually have to, uh, to be influenced by the horrible lies and propaganda of this, um, uh, of this movie is a total, complete waste of time. So... Um, as a researcher, I obtained, I bought this as cheap as I could to, to see what it was about, because I'm interested in Vlad in general and what's happened. But when you get something from a very prejudiced point of view, um, and everybody wants to um, give uh, credit to everybody else, and you don't want to say anything bad about it, well, this is nonsense. This is what you're getting. Uh, Aaron, the now dictator of Turkey, who's putting in uh, stringent, made himself king, by the way, and he'll never leave, uh, and is enforcing ancient Islamic law, um, has is a dangerous factor and highly supported by, of course, their cousins and allies, the Germans. And let's remember, everybody, every single terrorist that strikes anywhere in the world that is coming from the Middle East, which is almost all of them, have all went through Germany, including 9-11. Every single one of them was brought into Germany, housed for years, trained and taken care of, so they can go out and do their thing.
So remember that. And of course, the stupid Americans protect them and the American military gives the very cowardice uh, German army um, way too much leadway. Uh, they're incompetent, they're cowards, they refuse to fight anywhere, they've lost every war they've ever been in, uh, yet the stupid American military has been guiled by their little devilish smiles and attitudes that go with it, while their bodies of hundreds of thousands of American troops that were murdered in World War II, not to mention the millions of civilians of their own they murdered, and around the world. So this is a connection that we have to wake up to, people. This whole European uh, understanding of what's going on, uh, few people talk about uh, for many, many reasons. But the kind of horrific things that go on in Europe today that are anti American, as even the poodle of the French, otherwise the poodle of the Germans, otherwise known as the French, who recently came out against NATO when Trump was visiting Europe. Well, of course they're against, they're Russians. So they're hooked up with the Germans who run them around like a hand puppet. Uh, and the Germans, of course, are controlled by the Russians who invaded and brought in their mafia to easily kick the ass of the Germans, who are the biggest cowards that there are. Not to mention the fact that Germany has the more homosexuals than any other place on the planet. So the whole idea is that this is a society people know little about, and they uh, have a huge Turkish population. It's probably 30%, and if you add in all the other, you're talking about 40 uh, to possibly 60% of the population already is Arabic, and of course they have the highest birth rate on the planet. So as what's happened, uh, you can conquer a country very easily by just populating it. This has been proven in the United States, which has a 50% population of Mexicans now who just came here and had lots of babies. That's just the way it works. So uh, these are facts. and It's nothing to do about um, uh, anything that is considered negative in terms of anybody's racial standings. I have no like of anybody. The, the Aryan Arabs are the worst people on the planet and what they're doing, and we've proven with the recent um, uh, Volkswagen scandal where we found a huge criminal activity uh, by Volkswagen and, their, and the Germans in general that are going in and uh, producing garbage and undercutting prices uh, so they can take over markets. Um, Certainly you see endless German products in the United States, but you see virtually none in Germany. So uh, the German, Turkish, Russian connection is real, people. That's what's going on. Now, whether the big bankers and the Illuminati, well, they benefit from both sides, but they're certainly power players here, and we need to understand this. Uh, there's massive attacks from Russia on the West all the time uh, through computers and other things, uh, costing them hundreds of millions of dollars uh, all around the world, and uh, this is part of their game. So we need to understand that and understand the fact of what's going on. And this kind of, you know, to see this kind of propaganda to come out um, in um, the 21st century uh, is very important so you understand where they're coming from. The world is a complicated place and it's difficult to figure out. And, of course, nobody reads and they buy into things like this. And the demonizing of the great Christian hero, Vlad Tepish, is really an affront to anything, everything. It's an affront to everyone who believes in justice, anyone who believes in uh, their own country and fighting for what they believe in. To demonize a person like this who did nothing but try and save his country and paid for it with his life. This is not some game. This isn't some military where we have generals that sit in their big fancy chairs in some uh, office somewhere on some secure base uh, and not risking their lives. I wonder how many wars we would have lost if those generals were in the front lines. So people need to know the real story. They need to know what's going on because of the massive problems that Islam has been uh perpetrating on the West and what their plans are and how they're going to take over is certainly very, very simple and has worked, and that is population. And, of course, support by your cousins. So people need to wake up. They need to understand the actual problems that there is in Europe and understand that particularly Americans who don't give a shit about each other and don't support each other overseas and would more easily support foreigners over their own people um, need to wake up. 
and you need to wake up now. You are an American. Nobody likes you. The Europeans don't like you. The Brits don't like you. The French don't like you. They want the money out of your pocket and nothing more. And it's time that everybody wakes up and understands this at its highest possible level. And when you look at these kind of propagandic films attacking uh, Christianity in general um, by a culture who is extremely violent, well, take note of it and watch your back.